Well, I am performing the, the Bloch sacred service, the Avodet HaChadosh, uh, which is, uh, I think, one of the most uh, beautiful pieces of music and uh, choral pieces. And I think it's quite uh, wonderful to do this piece more regularly now, as it seems to be to be happening, because we, we, we do all the masses of Mozart and we do the Misa Solemnis and why, why don't we do liturgies of other religions? And this is, I think, a very beautiful setting of, of uh, your liturgy, as it were. The, the challenge, of course, is, is a language that we're not very used to and uh, certainly to, to sing in. I was surprised at how comfortable the language is to sing in. And the main reason is because, regardless of some of the strange consonants that you have to get used to, and I speak, I speak German quite fluently and, and have worked in other languages, and we'll talk about that, but, you know, the ch, this and there, and some of the juxtapositions of consonants can be, can be rather strange, but essentially the language is built on vowel sounds. And so once you, and, and also very clear vowel sounds, if you have be'ir, you have be'ir, you know, it's not a lot of diphthongs, it's a lot of moving from vowel to vowel, and it's a very pure kind of sound, and I find it, I find it very beautiful, and of course most of this piece is in a kind of modal writing, so you have a lot of very, if you will, pure harmonies and, and pure modes that you're working in, so it has a, a very fundamental feeling and, and sound to it. I enjoy it very much. I think taking this piece to the Fall Salzburg Festival uh, is, is very important just as a piece of music from Ernest Bloch and this literature and this belief system, this profession of faith, uh, which is essentially, well not essentially, but equally human as well as spiritual as well as religious, but from a completely different culture and a completely different religious uh, thought process, if you will than Western, quote-unquote, liturgy, uh, certainly Christian liturgy, which you hear very often in, in concerts. And I think it is very important that we embrace as many different spiritual essences and paths, religious paths to spiritual enlightenment, if you will, through music literature that we can. And I think that's a very exciting point. Now, that this is happening with Zubin Mehta, and the Israel Philharmonic and Thomas Hampson, who we have now become very close friends, all of us together. This is very special. And having lived in Austria for some time uh, and been at the Salzburg Festival for so, so many years and have been on all of the concerts of the IPO of the last probably 20 years in Salzburg, uh, I, I, I want to keep a cool head about me because it's very emotional. I, I feel very passionate about this organization about this country, about this liturgy, this, this music, and the fact that we will be on tour together in this country. It's, it is a very special event for all of us. It, I, th I think that, well, for one thing, I, I've sung in a lot of languages, and uh, it's, it's been a great challenge, and, and uh, it interests me a great deal. Languages and the sounds of languages and how people express themselves is something that has always interested me. And so I think now I'm up to, literally last week I did a, a, a premiere of a piece written for me by a Czech composer, Sylvie Bodorova, and it's a 50-minute song cycle with orchestra of eight songs in seven languages. And, and the two new ones were, were, uh, were um, well, the, the new one, that, one is very new, and that is Turkish, an old Turkish language, somewhat related to old Spanish. But it had old Spanish, old Turkish, Italian, Latin, German, and Czech. And uh, that's so I think I'm up to 14 languages now, if you include, you know, Yiddish and English and Italian and all these other languages. Um, they all have a, the, 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 in terms of a language that I prefer to sing in, 
um, there's a handful that you always return to. Some of them might, some might surprise you. They, a language like Russian, I speak no Russian and I'm not a, a Russianophile as it were, but the Russian language to sing is extraordinarily musical because everything is sounded. The consonants are sounded, the diphthongs are, are, are challenging and can be very, very tedious, but you're always moving on a vocal musical level when you sing Russian and this is quite, this is quite special. Polish is, is exactly the opposite because it's a spoken tradition and so all of the consonants have their own rules and some of them are, are mini consonants. Uh, you know, if, if you, so you have a high F sharp of you've got to get all three of those consonants. You know, this is brutal. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different properties but they find their own, own, own expression. I think you have to be very careful uh, and, and, and preempting one of your, your questions actually is, is you have to be very careful to work with someone who knows the language as their own and also the tradition of the music you're working in because those are two different things. Um, I do not speak 14 languages. I haven't even learned a handful of, of words in all of these languages. But you, of course, identify sounds. You certainly translate them. But you must understand the expression. You must understand how the context and the semantics of the sentence is structured, which for a musician is usually uh, easier because we l are living in a musical language and if it's a good piece, if it's well composed, you're going to learn a lot about the language in the language of the, of the composer, whether it's Szymanowski or Gustav Mahler or Ernst Bloch or so forth. Singing in your own language can sometimes be the biggest challenge and because singing and speaking are not the same process, uh, either in your brain waves or in your or in your vocal mechanism. So, to get past your speaking instinct and actually sing it is a physical issue. Then, like you say, the, as we were talking, the the whole idea of accent, and of course with English it's very important. I sing a lot of American songs. I sing a lot of British songs. You know, when you sing. Some things, we, what we call Atlantic English, you know, so we move the accent sort of off of New York but not to England and off of England and not, you know, too far. So we find some sort of neutral expression. English can be a very difficult language because it's so vernacularly oriented and people are uncomfortable in my country hearing sung English sometimes because it sounds elevated, it sounds less than direct and emotional. Uh, and so that is a big question in terms of what songs. I sing a lot of American songs and some of them are a very direct expression and it's very easy to, to sing and to find that musical element. And then sometimes it becomes really poetry set to music and the art song and it all gets a little bit more elevated to metaphor and ideas. And this can be sometimes challenging for, for publishers. And I assume that's the same in every culture, quite frankly. This is, and this piece is interesting because some, some of your colleagues have said that when they hear me sing this, yes, they recognize it, but they're, but they're kind of translating into modern Hebrew. And this is more than just Ashkenazi Hebrew. This is a very old-fashioned kind of writing in the 30s. If you look at English literature of the 30s, I just did a piece, uh, Hindemith, Matis de Mala, uh, and this is not only influenced by the 30s, but it's a 30s composer writing his own libretto in a Renaissance style. So. These are all, but these are all wonderfully fascinating sort of gardening tools as you as you're tilling your garden and planting your your your, your plants and fruit and whatever that metaphor is going to become. <laughs> When I hear, when I go out on the street and I hear street Hebrew, uh, I will recognize sounds, but I, I, I just have not studied the language. I, I, it still sounds very foreign to me. I, I will recognize that that is a Hebrew word, or I recognize, but for one thing, that the Hebrew that I've learned is not really Hebrew poetry. It's, it's Hebrew liturgy. It's, it's, it's going to be words that I'm going to hear in other religious services. Now, the other, if I hear other music of the same words, uh, uh, you know, spiritual words or, or professions of faith as this piece is, is and in even contemplations of life as, as this piece confronts. This I recognize 
uh, immediately, and uh, and that's very beautiful. But uh, no, I'm I'm very much a foreigner on the streets of of Tel Aviv.